Welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, and this is your Cannabis Business Podcast. Some of the biggest investments are multi-state operators, data, and consumption lounges. But within that, the specific targets have been vape and accurate dosing, as well as beverages. So Constellation Brands threw in almost $5 billion up in Canada. So a lot of money being thrown around. So there's a lot of investment being thrown at infused beverages, as well as healthier alternatives as kind of the soda market gets not only taxed, uh, but people are just actually maybe looking for healthy alternatives. A lot of these companies are gearing up for Canada to start allowing edibles and concentrate. And so cannabis drinks are hitting the global market and they're promising certain claims like anxiety reduction, pain relief, better sleep. But one thing is for sure is that a lot more investment is gonna come into the space. What will help a lot of these companies is consumption. So whether it's directly at the farmers being able to sell it to the end user or having a cannabis cafe being able to sample whether it's CBD coffee or a sativa indica, there should be a spot that has an educated individual there to um, not only educate, but then assist from samples to purchase. Alaska finally becomes the first state to legalize social consumption. Lawmakers in Alaska signed off on new regulations explicitly permitting adults to consume cannabis at specifically licensed retailers. This will go into effect before at 420 this year for a licensed cannabis retailer to apply for an on-site consumption endorsement. Local governments may challenge that. And we've seen that in every state where even though it's legal, there's a moratorium or there's some city that just outright bans it. So they may challenge that application in certain instances or initiate municipal votes or limits on site activities. It's anticipated that the initial on-site consumption areas may be approved by this summer. So the difference with Denver or West Hollywood that already have regulated on-site consumption lounges, Alaska is the first adult jurisdiction to establish regulations statewide. So when those rules go into effect, Alaska will be the first state to finalize and approve statewide rules for on-site consumption. They expect more to follow suit, allowing social consumption is sensible from a business perspective, particularly for states with large amounts of tourists who otherwise have no place to legally consume, but also has an important social justice component. Absolutely. A friend of mine with multiple sclerosis had nowhere to go. He was in an adult care facility and they're obviously subsidized by the government. So he has no place to go. Um, you get a ticket if you go outside. And it's uh, unfortunate. Um, even if you have an apartment, your landlord's not going to allow you to smoke. So there's really nowhere to go. Um, as an adult, you should have the right to uh, consume if you want. It's an inalienable right. We're all adults. And by preventing retail outlets and other venues from being licensed and regulated for social consumption, many patients have to choose between effective cannabis treatment for their ailments or being thrown out of public housing. This causes the civil liberties that come with cannabis legalization still being kept at arm's length for low-income individuals and members of other marginalized communities. And with that, we're going to roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is The Talking Hedge, your cannabis business podcast. Like, subscribe, and share, or don't, and I'm out.